Hey, Joseph. Welcome to my new establishment. What can I get you? You got any magical swords or whips made out of demon souls? What makes you think I sell anything like that here? This is a legit business, man. Really? Well, according to the Bayonetta games, bars like this always have cool weapons like that. Well, Bayonetta is right when it comes to my bar. I can get you some cool stuff, but I need something first. Alright, I'll come back with a bag of catnip. No, you stereotypical son of a bitch. There's a Wii U game you gotta review. I heard you were awakened to review the original Bayonetta. And now you want me to review the sequel. You damn right, brother. You got a deal. Behold the Wii U exclusive Bayonetta 2. The game opens with Bayonetta, sporting some formal wear and a new haircut, doing some Christmas shopping since it's been quiet for a while, but she'll have to get into her battle costume fast. Because all fucking hell is gonna break loose. As it does with an angel attack. But when Bayonetta summons a demon to finish off the angel boss, that demon breaks free and attacks her friend John. That attack knocks her soul out of her body and she's dragged into hell. So after Bayonetta puts down the demon, she embarks on a mission to go into hell, retrieve Jean's soul, and find out what bigger plot is happening behind all the sudden chaos. Particularly, what the hell is up with this snarky, mysterious boy who can fight using magic cards? Like the first game, there's a lot to the story that's interesting, but doesn't always make sense. Also, little Loki, as he's apparently named, can get annoying at times to where you want to smack him. But the story is that it's most entertaining when you pay attention to the basics that explain why you're doing all this fighting. Either that, or allowing your brain to accept this wild world the game has cooked up. It seems like the game doesn't feel any guilt over its ridiculous nature that's often hard to take seriously. The visuals for Bayonetta 2 are actually a bit better than its predecessor, probably due to this game being natively made for the Wii U rather than being a last-gen port. The character models are the same quality, but the textures are cleaner, the lighting looks more cinematic, even those still-frame-style cutscenes look less awkward now. Overall, it's a more polished action game. The sound quality is the same as last time too. It features hard-hitting sound effects, good yet cheesy voice acting to match the over-the-top presentation, and some new music to make the gameplay more fun. Bayonetta 2 is similar to Bayonetta 1 in many ways. Fast-paced, flashy action with magic, different weapons, and big explosions. But some new things have been added. For starters, Bayonetta later gets the ability to turn into a water snake for faster swimming. She also has her panther ability right from chapter 1. And actually on that subject, my ability with that has improved too. This time I'm gonna get it right. You'll see, I'll turn into a badass panther. Transform! <laughs> Son of a bitch, not again. Oh my gosh, a kitty! Oh, Wait, what are you doing? Here, Wait, no, I have a game to review. No. I guess magic is better left to the witch. And her magic from the previous game has returned with abilities like Witch Time where you get a well-timed dodge. You also build up more magic as you land combos and avoid getting hit until you build up enough to trigger a torture attack. These torture attacks are still just as fun to use against tough enemies who've been giving you hell. Go and kiss your mother's behind. And the enemies will give you hell as the game's combat sections are just as brutal as its predecessor forcing you to react fast and encouraging you to be strategic with your weapons and items, though maybe not Dark Souls or Zombie you brutal But a new and arguably more useful move you can use alternatively is Umbrin Climax. It basically multiplies your attacks by mixing each punch and kick with giant demon limbs for much more damage and more opponents at once. The main reason why this move is more useful is because unlike the torture attacks, you can use Umbrin Climax in the epic boss fights, and those return as well. By having you fight angels and demons this time, you get an awesome variety of large, creative, and challenging bosses to fight, complete with Bayonetta's hypersexualized finishing moves. I may have accidentally given some nerd an idea for a porn parody of this game, but knowing this game and the bizarre nature of the internet, that probably already exists somewhere. The internet is a terrifying place. Controversial topics aside, Bayonetta 2 isn't all combat. There are worlds to run through in between fights, and this time they actually feel bigger and way more open than the first game. Naturally, with these designs, you feel compelled to explore each area to find helpful items as well as books to read. Some items even have you complete a timed collectathon challenge to gain access to a treasure chest, which to me sounds like a well-made Zelda-inspired aspect. 
Among the useful items found are things to mix using the recipe book. With all the recipes for you to see, you can easily mix in the right amount of ingredients to make the power-up candy of health, temporary invincibility, and the rest. Add that to the ability to mix and match the weapons you can unlock and switch between weapon sets on the fly, and the game actually feels like a well-fleshed-out action-adventure game, even if it does still have a lot of linear levels. Now of course, as a Wii U exclusive, it has some Nintendo features included too. The off-TV play, touch controls, and motion controls have all returned for those who would like to use them. While I still prefer playing this particular game the traditional way, the gamepad control features are fun to use on occasion. But my favorite Nintendo feature is the return of costumes for Bayonetta. The same four Nintendo costumes return along with some original costumes and a Star Fox costume. Platinum Games definitely didn't slack off with this costume either. Along with its inspired design, this pilot outfit replaces your guns with laser-firing mini R-wings and lets you barrel roll in a chapter where you would otherwise use a fighter jet. Pretty smooth flying, Bayonetta. Do a barrel roll! Clearly, this was meant to be. My only problem with the costumes this time is that you have to buy them, and they're not cheap. I guess this was meant to increase replay value, but for the Nintendo costumes, I would have preferred having them available from Chapter 1, or unlocking them by simply completing certain chapters. Additionally, Platinum included a two-player co-op mode called Tag Climax. You can play this with anyone online or with a computer offline, but unfortunately you can't play with another human player locally, and I think they should have and could have if they let a second player use a pro controller, or if Nintendo had gone through with letting us play with two gamepads on one console. You let me down, Reggie. You let me down. But on the mode itself, it's a rapid-fire combat-focused mode. After selecting a level you've unlocked by playing the main game, you can increase the difficulty of that level by betting halos. Win the challenge, win more halos. But that's not easy. The higher the difficulty, the more damage every enemy attack does. So especially the hard boss fights can give you a big run for your money. Oh shit! Now, you and your teammate can revive each other, but it's pretty easy for both of you to get murdered in this mode. So if you're looking for a quick and intense challenge you can play with a friend online, Tag Climax will definitely give that to you. I feel like Bayonetta 2 improved on the original game. Better graphics, more fleshed out gameplay, there just feels like much more to this game. And while the over the top sexualization of Bayonetta will inevitably get mixed reception, especially in this day and age, this is a fun and exclusive action game for Wii U owners looking for more M rated titles. Well that's my review of Bayonetta 2. If you like this review, check out my previous reviews of Bayonetta 1 and Star Fox Zero for the Wii U. See you all next time.